I'm thinking about exposition and how it relates to your story and dialogue. Exposition literally translates from Latin as showing forth. It can show your reader needed character development, setting, and help move the plot along. But too much exposition can bog down the story. However, sprinkled throughout the text, and especially utilizing dialogue, it can be the perfect way to connect your reader to your story. We're going to explore in this lesson how to utilize exposition for your story making. Dialogue and exposition, as seen in the selection by Stephen King, The Shining. Ullman had asked a question he hadn't caught. That was bad. Ullman was the type of man who would file such lapses away and a mental Rolodex for later consideration. I'm sorry? I asked if your wife fully understands what she'd be taking on here. And there's your son, of course. He glanced down at the application in front of him. Uh, Daniel, your wife isn't a bit intimidated by the idea? Wendy is an extraordinary woman. And your son is also extraordinary? King gives us character exposition via the dialogue here. We learn Jack has a wife and son. We are also getting setting exposition. King sows the idea of the hotel being ominous when Ullman asks if his Jack's wife will be intimidated. There is a hint of mystery about the other two character, Wendy, and also the character Daniel, Jack's son. If you use dialogue for exposition, make sure it fills in information central to your plot. By page two of The Shining, we already know King's setting is intimidating and have been introduced to the story's central characters. Under a lurid dawn sun, the Usher property was less baleful than it had been during the past evening's abode. Splitting weather event and my practiced realtor's eye. Um, have I not mentioned my profession already? Recognize developmental potential once the tarn was drained and the fissure remediated. Perhaps to build an outlet of shopping at which consumers would dawdle, aghast at the scale of discount savings. This selection is from the English Department, San Jose State University. Since 1982, San Jose State University has sponsored the Bulwer Lighten Fiction Contest, a whimsical literary competition that challenges entrants to compose opening sentences to the worst of all possible novels. I want you to take Brian Bruce's winning selection and transform it into a dialogue. Pull out the key facts, but also expand on what is there and make a dialogue. You have a time of day, place, job position, plot hint. What you supply is the construction of the dialogue and even the characters' names or names. I will give you five minutes. When writers are under time constraints, you aren't consumed by doubts, but you have to jump in. It is amazing how many words you can actually produce under and within five minutes. One final tip before you start writing, and it's supplied by John Steinbeck, 1962 Nobel Prize winner of literature. If you are using dialogue, say it aloud as you write it. Only then will it have the sound of speech. All right. Three, two, one, right.
time. Please share what you wrote in the comments section. Title it, Under a Lurid Sun. Putting it all together. Don't overload your reader in one dialogue passage. Depending on your format, novel, creative nonfiction, or short story, the format dictates what type of exposition you use and how much of it you incorporate. A novel has more breath. You can spread the background throughout many, much more pages. Whereas creative nonfiction, you are limited by what you recall or what others have told you. Short stories, though. Now, there's the lesson and possibly the rule. Short stories don't have a lot of real estate. So choose the information which is central to the plot. That makes your reader want to keep reading. Dialogue also allows characters to come alive and with a voice. The inflection or manner of speaking reveals a character's background. Like, totally awesome man is different from, I found that quite delightful. Illuminating the character details subtly allows you to tantalize your readers, but also adds another layer to your characters, bringing them from two-dimensional to flesh and blood entities. Finally, characters and plot do not exist in a vacuum. Well, unless they do. So describe the vacuum. Is it made by Dyson or Hoover? Or is it a blank void like in uh, Stranger Things, the Netflix show? You are still mindful of the above points but you are judicious creating a reason for your reader to continue. But your words are crafting a vivid picture too. I believe in one word at a time and five minutes a day. Remember, you are only a conversation away from connecting your reader to your story. I hope you enjoyed this lesson today please like me below, give me a thumbs up, and until next time, happy writing.